So what do we have here? Well, this is a an old uh, BBC Micro five and a quarter inch forty track single sided floppy drive, which I bought from a Stardock forum member, uh, to which I have made a case modification and added some uh, things which weren't there originally, such as this SD card slot and a PS2 keyboard interface. Thank you very much. As well as this 2x16 LCD display from SparkFun. It was all made with parts that I had kicking around the house. So it will um, scan the SD card and look at uh, what's on there. There are a load of uh, SSD disk images which were all downloaded from the Stairway to Hell archive of uh, BBC Micro software. Um, that 0654 SSDs is actually in hexadecimal, so that's 1500 and something rather than 654. Uh, so when it boots up, it will display um, various boot messages. Um, so there's information about the uh, SD card and the FAT file system. Um, yeah, and it also has a help display, which tells you what it does, various commands that it accepts via the PS2 keyboard. Um, and these are probably the two most useful ones. There are various others. These are probably the most the most useful ones. So uh, you can look, s search the uh, SSD files on the card for whatever you want, and then uh, write one of the results to disk. So supposing we wanted to play, so we wanted to play a bit of a classic Chucky egg. So you can type slash Chucky. And it will search for files matching Chucky. So there's there's various versions. There's result result zero there, which is some sort of cheated version. Um, version one, which appears to be the, be the vanilla version of Chucky Egg. Uh, two, three. There's, there's the electron the electron version. Um, another trained version. There's the extra colors hack, which I think was done by Rich Talbot Watkins on the startup startup forums. Um, Chucky Egg 2. So, supposing we just want to play the vanilla game, um, we will, of course, be needing a disc for that. Fortunately, I do still have some. So, you can put that in and type W1, which was the result, result number one, and it will do its thing. So as well as an FAT driver, I had to write a partial uh, Intel 8271 emulator, which was a bit of a challenge and get it to compute the CRCs correctly and that sort of thing. But uh, got there eventually. So it will write a 40-track image. And then we can take the disk out. And hopefully... Um, give it a whirl on this fabulous machine over here and this should with any luck start the uh, famous Chucky Egg which uh, I'm sure cost many people many hours of their young lives back in the day and there we go so it's not just limited to that of course One of the uh, one of the more interesting things you can do with it, perhaps, is um, ask it for a lucky dip, which is the exclamation mark command, and that will just write, um, you know, a disk image at random from the uh, from the fifteen hundred or so on the card, and uh, this is usually some. Uh, well, I don't wish to be rude to any game authors, but uh, I'll be fair. It's usually some boring adventure game. But, uh, you know, you never know. We might get lucky. So we'll see what this is. Oh, the suspense. Beep, beep. Your guess is as good as mine, as far as this is concerned. So there we go, that's the disk toaster. I quite like it because, I mean, there are a lot of uh, MMC-based storage solutions and uh, things like the GoTech available for the Acorn systems. But um, 
I, I quite like the way this is all still mechanical and the, the thing is a completely standalone unit so you can just put your image on the SD card because it supports um, a standard FAT file system you don't need to use any special software to get images onto the card you can just dump them there's a directory called beeb in the root directory and you can just dump whatever you want in there um, and it will uh, yeah it will just pick it up when you when you boot the thing up so that's quite nice um, so I shall just stop this now and let you have a quick look inside even though it's a terrible mess in there so inside is uh, all of the madness you might expect the uh, the whole thing is based on this um, it says Philips LPC2214, although it's now Nexperia, of course. Um, this is an old chip, which I think is it's deprecated. It's one of those, you know, not recommended for new designs. Um, if I had my time again, I probably would do this using a, using one of the modern, more modern Cortex, maybe a Cortex M3 or something. But uh, as I said, I did want to do this just using parts that I already had sort of kicking around the house. So I had this board. I think these were made in Thailand. And then I had to swap the crystal out for, uh, this was originally a 19.6608 megahertz crystal for some reason. I guess whoever made them must have got a job lot of 19.6608 megahertz crystals. But I replaced that with a 25 megahertz crystal, um, which I pulled off a uh, an old uh, serial ATA card that wasn't working. So that was handy. Um, and you need you need 25 megahertz, of course, for the uh, to get the, the timing right. Um, the, the floppy timing right all the floppy drive stuff is done in software so there's no actual floppy disk controller on this it's all done in software using sort of cunning timing um, to write the write the, the sectors out to the disk um, with the appropriate timing um, you've got the you know JTAG port at the back it's all wired up with these these 0.1 inch um, cables wires or every, whatever you want to call them there's the original power supply um, which is kind of hiding underneath this aluminium plate that I added in order to put the electronics on and then I installed some fake some fake sides which are also made out of the, the same aluminium plate and the old the original uh, hood which sat on top now sits on top of these so I added a sort of extra inch or so to the height of the thing put the original hood on top um, and then you've got uh, this this strip board here which has it's not terribly interesting. It just has some glue logic, and there's, there's a CMOS uh, 541, which is mainly there, it, mainly there just to protect the microcontroller from anything untoward, and then uh, and, and provide some current amplification. And then there are these transistors and the resistors that you need for the um, for the for the termination resistors for the um, for the floppy drive. Um, so yeah, there's nothing, nothing. There's no intelligence on this board. It's just it's just dumb glue logic and and the uh, the open collector interface. There's a bunch of different transistors on it because I just again I just use whatever I could find. Uh, and then you have the um, the PS2 socket for the keyboard. There's the SD card slot which is made from a appropriately enough repurposed is a repurposed floppy drive edge connector, um, which was a, an old trick that I picked up off the internet. Uh, and then the um, LCD module, the Spark Fun LCD module, which is a UART. I don't think you can get them anymore actually, but that just uses one of the serial, one of the serial ports on the uh, on the microcontroller, and just hooks up to this to this LCD module at the front. Um, yeah, so uh, so that's it. That's uh, those are the insides, uh, which uh, are fairly chaotic. Everything's everything's been quite carefully labelled because. Uh, Anything else will be madness. Um, hopefully, I won't have to tinker with the inside too much in the future. Yeah, so there you go. That's the disc toaster. Wonderful.